Hi, welcome to the heat transfer lab. Today we will study forced and free convective heat transfer. We wish to find out how the effect of motion of air can increase the heat transfer from a heated surface. Come, let us see how all these things can be measured in this experimental setup. This is the entire assembly where we will be performing forced and free convection heat transfer experiments. This is a piece of equipment that can be heated through an electrical coil. The coil is inside this box. The top surface is flat. If left alone in a still room with cold air surrounding, it can set up natural convection, also called as free convection. The surface can be horizontal or vertical. Both will lead to free convection. In which mode do you think the rate of heat transfer will be higher? The horizontal or the vertical? We can also place it next to a fan and allow it to take out heat at a faster rate. Another way to increase heat transfer is to use an extended surface. Here we have flat fins with a triangular cross section coming out of this surface. In this piece we have cylindrical pins extended from the heated base. You will be using one or more of these pieces to study convective heat transfer. Come, let us find out how we can set up a simple experiment to quantify all these. The heated plate section goes here like this in this rectangular channel. After inserting on this support rods, we can secure them with these screws. This long vertical channel is the air duct that encloses the heater assembly. The channel is covered from all four directions so that there is no disturbance from the surrounding fluid in the room. Air is forced in this duct using the centrifugal fan at the bottom of this channel. This is the main controller and monitoring unit. It is also called as the heat transfer service unit. It has various ports for capturing data from the temperature and the flow sensors. It also has a knob that can be used to control the heater voltage and hence the heating power. Now we will see what are the various quantities that are either set or measured. It is the fluid that is taking the heat away. So we would like to know what temperature it was before it came in contact with the heater and what is the temperature after contact. We have here two thermocouples measuring exactly the same. This thermocouple measures the temperature of the incoming air. This is denoted as T1 and this one above measures the outgoing air temperature. This is denoted as T2. Apart from these, we also have temperature sensor on the heater. For the flat plate, we only have one measurement that is at the base plate, which is denoted as T3. For the extended surfaces, we have three additional measurements along the extension. T4, which is close to the base, T5 at the midpoint and T6 at the edge. Similarly, for the finned heater, we have three thermocouples connected to the central fin. 
T4 at the bottom, T5 at the mid and T6 at the top edge. The wires coming out of the heater are the pins that will go into the main service unit. Notice the numbered tags 3, 4, 5 and 6 that denote four locations of the other end of the thermocouple. It is important that the pins are placed in the right socket. This is pin number 1 measuring the inlet air temperature. It is inserted to the socket marked as T1. Similarly, pin 2 goes to socket 2 and so on. The flow rate of air is measured using an air velocity sensor that is placed here. The other end of the velocity sensor goes to the heat transfer service unit into the socket marked as UA for velocity of air. Note that this top notch has to be on the top surface of the socket. We can also measure the outlet air velocity by placing an anemometer at the top. The anemometer is simply a fan that is calibrated so that the rotation speed can be related to the linear velocity of air that is passing through it. The anemometer gives the readings directly on this display. For the forced convection setup, this fan here blows air into the duct from the bottom. Let us see how to control the flow of air. The centrifugal fan sucks air from this side and blows it into the channel above. The inlet side flow rate is controlled using this disc which acts like a lid. It is called a throttle plate. We can adjust the screw to alter the distance between the disc and the inlet section. This will increase or decrease the flow rate. Now let us see some detailed controls of the service unit. We already saw the sockets inserted earlier. The manual remote switch is for selection between a local or a remote control using a computer interface. We will use the manual for the moment. The voltage of the heater is the only parameter that can be controlled electronically. Increasing the voltage increases the current through the heater and thereby increasing the I square R heating losses. Nothing else can be controlled through this unit. We already saw that the flow rate was controlled manually by adjust we already saw that the flow rate was controlled manually by adjusting the throttle plate. The rest of the stuff here are for monitoring various quantities measured using the sensors. This display selector shows the current, voltage or power input. This display shows the selected temperature from the thermocouple connected to the sockets below. That's all for the description of the equipment. Now that we have seen the instrument and its controls, let us see what kind of experiments we can perform. Free convection experiment is the simplest we can set up here. There is no need to operate the fan. We can choose one of the three heaters and fix them in the air duct. We have fitted the pinned heater to the duct. Turn the power on, increase the voltage so the wattage is at a desired value. Now you have to wait for long. While the temperature readings are reaching a steady state, you can explore and observe various parts of this equipment. Study the care with which each piece has been designed. Try to find out why a certain piece was designed the way it has been? What kind of materials have been used and why? What is the reason to select a particular geometry? 
What alternate designs can make this better? It can take about 2 hours to reach a steady state temperature. So please be patient. After a steady state temperature has been reached, check for the flow rate if it has reached a steady value and if it is fluctuating about a mean. Note down the current voltage and therefore the wattage, the temperatures at various sensors and the flow rate readings. The force convection experiment has only one additional control of the air velocity. Before starting the fan, ensure that the anemometer reading is at zero and the anemometer fan is stationary. Residual currents in the room can cause a small flow through the anemometer fan. Turn on the centrifugal fan and adjust the throttle plate to control the flow rate through the air duct. Again, wait till all the temperatures and flow rates reach a steady value and note down all the readings. You will see that it takes a very long time to take just one reading. If you have sufficient time, we can vary the flow rates as well as the heating wattage and control the temperatures and we will get a whole range of temperatures and flow rates. From this we can determine our own empirical heat transfer coefficients, but we do not have sufficient time for that. What we will do instead is to illustrate the principles, we will do some very simple calculations and compare it with the expected values. Though we can get empirical expressions for the heat transfer coefficients from our own experiments, we will use carefully obtained correlations from the literature. For example, instead of finding the heat transfer coefficient, we will use available he heat transfer correlations to obtain the expected heating rate and compare it with the actual heating rate that was set in the heat transfer service unit. Similarly, we can compare the expected velocity of the forced convection against what we actually observe. The details of the specific experiment you have to carry out are given in the experiment manual. Enjoy doing the experiment and explore what else you can do with this setup. What does it teach you in designing heat transfer equipments? Goodbye.